که بیا سمت چه پایت Margaret, because you love 
So you have to come forward and light these candles for all of us. Please come. Because you laughed.
Lord Jesus Christ, the master of both the light and the darkness. Lord, send the Holy Spirit upon our preparation for Christmas. Lord, we who have so much to do, seek quiet space to hear your voice each day. We who are anxious, anxious over many things, look forward to your coming among us this Christmas. Lord, we who are blessed in so many ways, Lord, for the complete joy of your kingdom. We whose hearts are heavy, seek the joy of your presence. We are your people, Lord, walking in darkness, yet, yet seeking the light. To you we say, come, come, Lord Jesus, come in our lives. O Holy God of promise, we so often place our trust in the things we can see, the things we can touch and easily believe. But you did not ask us to believe what is easy. You have asked us to believe what is true. Forgive us, O Holy Father. Forgive us, the Holy One, when we die the ways you work. Forgive us when we find it hard to believe an ancient story. Forgive us as we question how you choose to enter the world, born as one of us. Lord, forgive our lack of faith and believe in ways that seem so impossible to believe. Help us to look in faith, open our belief, and set aside, aside our doubts that you sent your Son, born of a virgin, the one who has come to set us all free. Now we offer these prayers in the name of your Son, our Lord, Emmanuel. And we also pray the prayer and say together, the prayer you taught your disciples to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thy is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Now please request Sheena to come forward and do the reading. And today's reading is here. Bear with one second, Sheena. Thank you, Sheena. Right, so the reading is from Matthew uh, chapter 1, verses 18 to 25. Christ born of Mary. Now the birth of Jesus Christ was as follows. After his mother Mary was betrothed to Joseph, before they came together, she was found with the child of the Holy Spirit. When Joseph, her husband, being a just man, and not wanting to make her a public example, was minded to put her away secretly. But when he thought about these things, Behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take to you Mary, your wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit. And she will bring forth a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. So all this was done that it might be fulfilled to spoken by the Lord through the prophet. Behold, the virgin shall be with child, and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which is translated, God with us. Then Joseph, being aroused from sleep, did as the angel of the Lord commanded him, and took to him his wife, and did not know her till she had brought forth her first little son. And he called his name Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Sheena, for reading this reading from Matthew chapter 1. Again, Matthew is opening these verses almost just in the first chapter, talking about Jesus' birth, which is very, very important. And then he is starting the story from a scandal, from a controversy. We all know how the baby 
our babies are born, don't we? There is no way a virgin could be pregnant. There is no way. And Joseph is just startled. Joseph is just surprised at how come he found Mary a good and devout woman who believed and feared God. How can Mary do this to him? However, the angel of God. However, God intervened with love and found that Joseph was about to leave her. Joseph was about to drop out from the plan of God, but God's plan was totally different. So God has to intervene and convince him that this is all plan of God. The plan of God of love, the plan of God of peace and joy, the plan of God to bring hope in the life of humanity. And then Joseph found that out, he was happy to join in that plan. You know how he would do that? Out of that love which God poured into him in Mary and through Jesus he's trying to pour into this world. Now, just now, Margaret, light the candle for... Um, With your help? For, sorry? With your help? With my help, yes, yes, Margaret. Well, we all need to help each other. And that's what we're doing. Uh, now, just to show the love of God, I would like to ask you a question. Now, if you were there in the morning, don't no, answer. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> right, okay. What do you think this is? Sorry? Sharing foam? Are you sure? Yeah. Can you tell me what am I holding right now? Sorry? It's all? It is a can. Right? Is that right? So right now you don't know if it is a foam inside or not. I could be a fake. I could put something, maybe a water in it. Maybe a gel or maybe some kind of other chemical which might harm you. Right? So, so far what I'm holding is a can. This can is our life, strong, unbreakable. Sometimes we make ourselves like that. But you know what? God, as I said, through Jesus, has already poured that love for all of us on this earth. We have that love of Christ inside us, love of God inside us through Christ. Unfortunately, what we do, we try to contain it, try to subsidize it, try to control that love inside us, contain it inside us. And that's the reason these cans are made. So these folk can, can stay inside and don't come out. But God's love is not like that. God's love is, you know what? God's love is this. History for us. This is God's love. Can you see? Yeah. Our life is like this cup or the glass is there. God's love, when one person pours into another, sometimes people can't even contain it and then it's running out. See that? This glass even can't contain that love. This is the God's love for all of us. Now, as I said, so far, this can is just a useless scan, a strong useless scan. But, and the foam inside was useless too, isn't it? Now, normally men use this foam. Do you use it yet? No. No? You? <laughs> so, normally men use that. And men can tell you, if you try to shave without this foam or a gel or whatever, you know, there will be too much tug and pull, cut and bruises on our on our faces. Now, now we get beautiful, good razors, but in the, I think 20, 20 years ago, 30 years ago, there was a cut here, cut there for all the men because we use all these sharp blades, isn't it? Try to shave, try to get a close shave. When you put a foam, you get a close shave. There's a less tug and pull, there is less cuts and less bruises on your face. That's what our life is, sometimes. When you have the love of God inside you, when you pour it 
out and you use that love of God to fill other people's life and to fill your own life too. What happens? We have less tongue and pull. I'm not saying that the troubles won't come. It will still come. You'll be still walking in the trouble, a storm of trouble. Yes, it might be. But it will be less tug and pull. There will be less bruises and less cuts because you'll be holding together. These two people, I would say, will hold in love and hold each other in love. Now, I'm sorry I'm saying that you may find it uh, very abrupt and not appropriate. A lot of young people don't want to be married. They want to remain single. And that's their choice. I don't, I don't find any problem with that. But remember what the Bible says. The Bible says, when two sleep together, they stay warm. God made Adam and Eve. And Adam, well, again, even the Bible says that you don't need to marry, but if you can't control, then you should get married. So, God has prepared the world for fellowship, to share the love of God with each other. And if you are not doing that, then we need to go and read 1 Corinthians chapter 13, which is the appropriate chapter for uh, for love. If you don't have love, you are we are useless because God has put that love in our hearts. So when we light this candle, the light of this candle shows us that we need to spread, we need to burn ourselves the way the candle is burning, but sharing, spreading the light with everyone, right? Is it easy to understand? Don't contain your love like a shaving foam inside. Share the love and then, I know it's not bad, but this is the God's love. We need to share it with everybody. Okay, thank you. And let's sing our next hymn now. Uh, the hymn number 296, While Humble Shepherd Watch Them Go. Can you all stand together? <laughs>
you will find it in today's gospel. When we read the gospel, you can see that there are a lot of scandals and controversy in that gospel. Well, it's hard to understand for not only for us, but for many other cultures and religion and philosophers and theologians that how can a virgin be pregnant? What's the thing that makes you wonder what really happened the way Matthew described in his first chapter? What's the hardest part to believe? Well, for most people, I suspect, as I already said, the thing that raises question, the controversy and debate is virgin's birth, <coughs> Mary's virginity. Aren't virginity and pregnancy mutually exclusive? Yes, it is as per our human understanding. How is it possible for a virgin to be pregnant, let alone give birth? to a baby. That does not fit with what we know about how babies are made. It just doesn't make sense, again as I said, in the scientific world, in our normal society and in our human understanding. There is no rational explanation for Jesus' conception and Jesus' birth here. That's why most of us most of us, no matter how poor or rich, wealthy, or again poor, or how intelligent or wise or how foolish you are, it doesn't make sense to all of us. That's where most of us get stuck with this reading when we read what Joseph is about to do. And that's where Joseph got stuck as well when he found out that Mary is pregnant. So he planned. He planned to dismiss her quietly because he was a just and good man. Well, Joseph has decided to dismiss Mary. We shouldn't be surprised, do we? Are you surprised? Are you surprised that he wants to uh, dismiss Mary? No. That's what a normal, normal society will do. That's what a just man should do. As for even the Moses law, when the disciples came and asked Jesus, Jesus, why was it allowed to uh, give divorce to the wives? And he said, because of your sinful hearts. Because except adultery, if anyone deceive or leave their wife, they are, it's not good. It's not permissible. That's what even Jesus said. But here, Joseph found out that somehow Mary is pregnant. Isn't that what we tend to do when we don't understand? Yes, that's what our society do. We dismiss things, the things we don't understand. When I was young, I couldn't understand math equations and cos theta. I just try to dismiss it. I try to avoid it, isn't it? That's what we all do. Whenever we find something hard, the things we don't understand, we try to dismiss it. We dismiss which make no sense to our human understanding and our limited brain. We turn away from the possibilities that don't fit our ideas, our beliefs, our experiences. And that's what normal human tendency is. Well, Joseph knows better than to believe that babies are, uh, are, babies are made without a man. And so do we, as I said. Joseph knows what he believes and believes what he knows. And that's the problem, unfortunately, here. It is just too small. With our limited understanding, we cannot understand the plans of God. <coughs> it's just too narrow, our understanding and Joseph's understanding. It's just too limiting. Because of our experiences, we just limit ourselves. I suspect there are times when we probably do a lot like Joseph. Just dismiss what we don't understand. Well, how many relationships, remember, how many relationship dreams have been lost just because, just because it didn't make sense to us. Maybe due to race, due to money, due to religion, due to family pressure, or so on. There's so many other reasons we just dismiss that relationship 
or the dream. Have you ever misjudged someone because you couldn't accept their explanation, their experience, and later you learn what they said was true? Isn't that? Remember, somebody said this this earth, this globe, is round. Right? And they actually kill them? Kill you? Is that right? Because their understanding was so limited. They were not able to reach what he said, but his experience was right, and now we accept that yes, well, there are a lot of people are coming to the church saying we are we are flat earth dwellers. There is a flat earth, but anyway, the science said it's not. Well, sometimes we assume that if it is not our experience, it can't happen. It's not true. Well, have you ever had the deep sense of joy and excitement about something you really wanted? You really wanted or wanted to do? Or we wanted to begin hearing the negative chakra in yourself? You? Ah, no way. You can never do that. That would never happen for you. You are too lazy. You are a failure. You are not wise enough. You are not rich enough. You are not passionate enough to do this. Well, you know better than that. Our inner voice keeps telling us. Well, certainly we have all had those experiences. Those times that we dismiss and walk away only to later wish we had waited for a bit longer there. We could have worked a little more hard for that to achieve and we might could have made, we might have made a different decision. Or spend more time asking, seeking, and knocking, and we might have made a some change in what was a reality for us lying in front of us at that moment. We dismiss people, my friends. We dismiss relationship, ideas, opportunities, even location, dreams, all the time because we don't understand. In India, a lot of people, a lot of youth, I was working in youth, a lot of youth, and they used to come to say, well, we like to work for God. We like to be a minister. But we never had an experience or calling of God in our lives. And I always tell them, see, my calling, my vocation is never that one day I was sleeping and I got a call like Joseph. Harrison, get up. Go and you have to do my ministry. Never. I've never seen an angel. I've never heard a voice from God. Harrison, Harrison, you can be the minister. Never. Never. But the voice inside me, like you can never do this. You can never be a minister. I subscribe that sign and I listen to God and I'm here right now in front of you. Because experiences, my friend, do not fit our usual experience or usual expectation. That's the reason we dismiss them. Because they don't make sense for us. That's the reason we dismiss them. And that's the time when we are refusing to open ourselves to something new. Something God's plan. Something which is God is planting in our lives. In the darkness, He is planting it. And then watering it and nurturing it. So that He can bring something new. Sometimes that means we refuse to open ourselves to God. And that's the normal happens. When we dismiss the new ideas, new belief, new relationship, new faith in our life. Isn't that Joseph is doing in our story when he decided to quietly dismiss Mary because he don't understand how can this be possible? Well, Joseph is dismissing the mystery of Emmanuel, God with us. He is dismissing not just Mary but the mother of God, the very one who will give God human flesh, a body, the one who makes Emmanuel possible. That's what often happens when we are dismissive, my friends. We foreclose the life, the opportunities God wants to birth in us and obviously through us. As I said, give an example of this love. I'm not suggesting that we ought to be naive. No, that we should fall for anything or everything and we accept everything. No, I'm not asking you to do that. But I wonder though, what we do is when we deem and when we demand answers and refuse to live with questions. 
What do we want to happen there? I wonder how often we mess our own life because we limit to it what we know, what is familiar for us, what makes sense and close ourselves to the not knowing, to something new, different or unexpected going to happen in our life. But I wonder if we dismiss God with us by our searching uh, for explanation and understanding rather than trusting and entering into that mystery. Before that dream, for both of them actually, they don't want to step into that mystery, Mary or Joseph. But God has opened something new for them, something marvelous, something that can ne ne never happen in the human history for them. And it's never going to happen in human history again. Well, ultimately, Joseph took Mary as his wife after God intervention. However, he first had to move beyond what he understood and what made sense for him. It was never his experience. It was never. He had to allow God with us to transcend the limit of his knowledge, his limited knowledge and understanding. He had to let go of trying to put it all in terms of a rational explanation because there was none. None of that, however, would happen between he, him and Mary. It would first have to happen within Joseph himself and must first happen within us as well. It's a shift that happened within us. He has to come from not accepting Mary to accept Mary, though he knew there will be a lot of questions from his parents, from his society, from the Pharisees, from Sadducees, from all the authorities. And they will be looked down upon. Because that's not acceptable in that time in their society. So he has to come out of it. They both have to come out of it and enter into the mystery of God, which God is planning with them and through them. While well, Mary and Joseph cannot simply talk it out or work through it, obviously. Think about it. Joseph is hurt and disappointed. He could see the belly is growing. He's hurt now. He's got questions which he couldn't find an answer. Well, you can be either pregnant or you can be a virgin. But you can't be both, can you? No, it's not possible. Mary knows that as well as Joseph knows that. She don't know what to explain, how to explain. Matthew, however, Matthew, however, doesn't tell us about this or any of the conversation between them. He must have come and have some kind of conversation. How this is possible? Why it is possible? Or he would explain how God intervened in there. But Matthew do not write this conversation in, in, in the chapter, in the book. Why? Because they just don't matter. They just don't matter at all. Their conversation doesn't matter at all. Making sense of this pregnancy, figuring it out and explaining how it happened. It doesn't make sense. It's not the point in the story of Jesus' birth. Makes sense or doesn't make sense? Don't worry, as the mystery God would like to share with you. So what is the most shocking part of today's gospel? The big scandal and shock of the story are not that a virgin is pregnant and gives birth. No, it's not. Though, if for a new human mind, it is. The real scandal, the real controversy is that God is with us. That's the scandal. The shock is that God through Mary takes on flesh and blood and comes to us. That's the controversy. God is flesh and his blood is real. That means that God is with us in people, in relationship, in ideas, in opportunities, in their vocation, in their dreams. He's taking birth. And that's the biggest scandal. And that's the biggest controversy for you and for me. So, so why? Why would we dismiss them? God is with us. God is within me. God is within you. God is with them and the whole world. God is with us in all the circumstances and situations of our life. In joy and in sorrow, in celebration and in grieving, in success and in failure, in hope and in repair, in courage and in paralyzing fear. 
You name it, God is there with us. That's the point of the story, my friend. Sometimes, however, the truth of what is gets lost or ignored in our attempts to explain how it is, to make sense of it, to make it confirm to our understanding, it doesn't make sense. Well, take a moment and look. Take a moment and look at your life. Maybe the last week, maybe the last month, maybe the last year, or maybe your whole life. Who are the people you have dismissed because you couldn't understand them? What relationship or opportunities have you quietly abandoned? What dreams have you walked away from? What happened? Why do we do that? What happened there? Somewhere in those people, somewhere in those relationships, opportunities and dreams, there was something that made no sense, but that could have been the plan of God, the mystery revealed in your life. An explanation was lacking, yes. Something didn't match our own experience, our own expectation, our limited understanding. We couldn't understand what was happening at that point. We didn't know what to do. We couldn't get straight in our head how it would all work out, so we let it go. We walk away and we abandon that relationship, that dream we have. Another quiet dismissal. Another quiet dismissal. In the end, we struggle, whether consciously or unconsciously, to recognize and believe the Emmanuel, God with us. Here's the deal, my friend. We all live on a spectrum between quietly dismissing Mary and taking her as a spouse. We all live in that spectrum. We all. Joseph has shown Though Joseph has shown us that, he reveals to us our own dismissal ways, but he also shows us that we can, we can take Mary and establish with her a relationship of commitment, of love and intimacy. That is our final work in this season of heaven. That's my final message for this last Sunday of heaven. It is our preparation of Christmas, my friends. It means that instead of analyzing and explaining how the story could happen, we simply bask in beauty and let the truth wash over us. Instead of looking for answers, let ponder what might be born in us, what needs to be born in us, what is waiting to be born in us. And that's how we open ourselves to life and possibilities God offers us. That's how we experience God the Emmanuel, God with us. That's what Joseph did. He experienced that God with us. He took Mary as his wife and opened himself to something new, something different, something unexpected, something unexplainable to him, to his limited understanding. He opened himself to life and possibility, God of birth, and he named it Jesus. That's what God was doing. That's what God wanted to do with you and with me. Isn't it beautiful that God is offering us all this which we don't deserve? But through faith, He's offering us, let's receive God the man, God with us. Thank you. Let's join our hearts in prayer. Lord God Almighty, the Father of ours. We rejoice at this time in your most gracious will, O Lord. Our will that is so shaped by your love, that has held nothing back from us. As we ponder this day, the message of the angels to Mary and to Joseph, and how their lives were changed by their acceptance of that message, we pray, Lord. We pray that our lives too may be changed like Joseph like Mary, like the shepherd and the kings and everyone is in that journey, in that story. That we may be people who trust in your word despite the obstacle, despite the impossibilities, despite it doesn't make sense <coughs> to us, which is unexplainable, that at first present themselves to us as we did. Grant God that like Mary and Joseph, we may be your willing and humble servant. And that like Joseph, we may place obedience to the vision you give us over 
any thoughts of our reputation or convenience. God, we thank you. We thank you, God, that is, since it is the needy and the lost, and to the least that you send Jesus, <coughs> we can know that you also come to us. We thank you that in him the mystery of love was born and is known. The love that makes us good and the power that makes us good. Lord. Help us to always celebrate the radiance of Christ, he who was born in Bethlehem, and be our light and the light of the whole world. Lord, we pray today for those who need the gift of Christmas in their lives. Those who have not understood your unique statement of their work in your sight. And Lord, we pray for those who feel empty. That they may discover the baby of Christmas. Who fills the soul with peace, with hope, with joy and love. We pray for those who feel alone, Lord. That they may discover that you are with them. That Jesus is still Emmanuel. And that in him and through him, you inherit every heart and transform every life open to his spirit. We ask for all these things through Christ Jesus, the baby of Bethlehem, the Lamb that was slain, the one who is both our brother and our Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you everyone. Let's sing our last hymn, Make Me a Channel of Your Peace. Can you please stand here? Love that Love us. 